Okay, a uh, moment of truth. All right, so as you can see, it kicked on. That's the sound that we hope to hear. And uh, I'm sure if I can hear the condenser, the uh, compressor running, that means that there's cold air flowing inside. Okay, I don't know if you guys saw that spark or not. Actually, I didn't see it because I wasn't looking at it. But it looks like there was a spark coming from the red wire at the bottom. Uh, which my dad's a bit worried about because he also saw that the first time that we did it. Um, we can't really investigate. We can't investigate it further now because we have to let the compressor run for like 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, but after that time, we'll come back and see uh, what caused that. We think the issue right now might be there's a bit of a gap. Uh, um, it's not like completely airtight. The uh, heat shrink. So we're gonna go back and try to seal up that heat shrink and uh, make it feel lighter. We can't use butane because uh, as you see there's well the, the back that that part right there is rubber and also there's also that foam that goes inside so we don't want to melt that. So we're gonna use probably a heat gun and try to seal that up. But at least you can see right now you know condensation means that's getting cooler. So uh, I mean it's kind of a, a pyrrhic victory. We, as you can see, we jerry-rigged um, everything to work. What we ended up doing was, the way that the prong looked like is that there's a circular pin coming out and there's a rectangular shaped wing coming, uh, coming out from it. And that's really hard to think of a way to fix a wire to that. What we ended up doing was we ended up kind of coiling the wire around the, around the cylindrical pin behind the wing. And so if it tried to get pulled out, it would catch on the wing. So hopefully that kept it in, and then we put some heat, heat shrink on it to hopefully reinforce that. And, uh, oh yeah, and that, that, that wire that we connected actually came from a 240 volt cable. So we just harvested it. Unfortunately, it's not the right color. As you can see, we connected white to red, and we even used a yellow connector for a black wire, but that doesn't matter. You know, jerry-rigging, sometimes you have to make sacrifices. And we ended up connecting it back to the original wires. So this wire goes to this one, this one goes to this one. And maybe we'll come back later and replace it with something more robust. But as you can see right now, it seems like all of the connections are in there pretty solidly. Our problem with our compressor is that the contacts are corroded. So there are, the reason that we had to jerry rig everything and had to put like, um, what's it called, heat wrap on it or shrink wrap on it, is because the contacts, they're called spade contacts, are corroded and they're not in the right shape to be able to uh, clamp onto, which you might see if you check out the previous video. And while we're trying to brainstorm ways to uh, connect wires to those corroded cor uh, connectors, I suggested to my dad, what well, if there's a way to screw the, um, the wire into the connector, like to clamp it in place? And so actually, we found someone, apparently someone had the same problem and they thought of the same solution. This is a quick lug um, terminal repair kit that uses this sort of screw clamp to attach those wires. And so we'll see after, uh, after we try to attach this, uh, if this one will work. And actually, this is probably going to be our preferred solution because this has a thicker gauge. This is 10 gauge, whereas this one is 12 gauge. This one, we, uh, this model we bought off of uh, eBay. You can see it's 2023, so it's a new one. 
and we're, we're not hopeful that it will fit because this one's an old compressor. But we're going to try taking the wires out and just seeing it, if it does for the video.